Hello VC, uh, welcome back. Uh, I had a pretty, pretty, pretty busy week last week. Um, last Saturday was my girlfriend's younger sister's uh, wedding down Stays Boat. Um, a four-hour drive for me. Uh, girlfriend went down like Monday uh, morning or afternoon. And, uh, I had to be down there because I actually ordained the wedding. Uh, I was the officiant. And, uh, uh, so it was pretty fun, uh, last week. Uh, little, little, well, kind of a little town on uh, the shores of, uh, Lake Michigan called Manistee. Uh, about an hour south of, uh, Traverse City. And, uh, a little town like that, there's, there's no record shops, right? Uh, some antique stores that had some records, but it's kind of what you expect to see in an antique store. And, uh, uh, actually I forgot to, I did pick up a couple of CDs, a couple of, uh, Delamitri CDs. Uh, forgot to, uh, forgot to bring those. But, uh, luckily for me, uh, we were driving back up on Sunday. Uh, a girlfriend followed me up from Manistee up to Travers, and, uh, because uh, there was a record shop that was actually open on Saturday from like 11 to 2. Uh, so we got got there a little afternoon and uh, we we closed the shop up. I mean, the, the store is beautiful. Um, it's called uh, 33, is it 33 RPM Records in Travers, uh, City, Michigan. Uh, highly, I mean, it's laid out pretty well. It's a little bit confusing. Because you have your, uh, like your your main set of records, if you will, like on top, and then there's extras on the bottom. Uh, I don't know if it's more like newer stuff on top, you stuff on the bottom, because that doesn't always hold true. Uh, but before actually, I get into what I picked up there. I did get my new Vinyl Me Please uh, record of the month. Um, it's an album that I actually just recently thought about picking up on, on vinyl. Um, but I held off. Thinking, I, I don't really, I don't really need it. I have it on CD. I don't listen to a whole lot as it is. Um, but, uh, I saw Vinyl Me Please was doing it. I wasn't super interested in the other couple of options, uh, for the month. So I decided just to go out and get it. And that's, uh. Phoenix's Wolfgang uh, Amadeus. Uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix, actually, by the band Phoenix. Um, I haven't actually opened this. I don't really know what it looks like yet, or all the extra packages, but I know they do a really good job at uh, at these sort of essential uh, releases. A little hype sticker, 10th anniversary reissue, remastered from the original analog tapes. Apparently, it's on pink colored vinyl. Uh, is the is the thing, and what I think is pretty neat is um, I don't know if other countries recognize it or not, but apparently June is Pride Month, and uh, they actually included this little uh, "Vanity Me Please" uh, rainbow Pride sticker that has to take Pride on the back. So I'll be I'll be doing something with this. Uh, proud supporter of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, but on to the records I picked up from Travers. Um, so, I guess I'll do it like this. Um, so they had a new arrival section. Uh, and, and for the record, this place had just a ton of stuff. Uh, between Led Zeppelin bootlegs... Um, some Pink Floyd bootlegs, imports on, you know, stuff you will want imports on. Like they had the, uh, I think it was the European Pink Floyd relics, the, uh, the cover that came out with the, the recent reissue. Uh, it's like white and kind of sketched out and stuff. Um, but I resisted the years to, uh, to get any of those and some of them were, you know, expensive like you would imagine. Um, however... And again, I haven't listened to any of this. Got back uh, Sunday night, and uh, I still need to actually finish hooking up my uh, stereo. 
but I rec but I saw this, um, and it looked super interesting because you know I'm I love funk music, especially P funk. So this is uh, called a Cosmic Jazz Funk Adventure from Detroit Rising Funk Masters. Uh, it has some guys from P funk and from United Sound. Uh, it's, it's glary, but they're still uh, still partially sealed. Um, here's the backside. Um, so for the P funk musicians, you have uh, Gabe Gonzalez, Danny Bedrosian, uh, Dwayne Blackbird McKnight, Lige Curry, Greg Thomas, Benjamin Benzel Cohen, Tanacha Nelson. And Steve Boyd. Uh, you also got the guest vocalist of Sue Ann Carwell, who sang with Prince in Parliament. And from United Sound, you have uh, Dumini de Porres and Kern Brantley. Uh, apparently, plays bass with Lady Gaga and Beyonce. I don't know. Uh, but this is on uh, Clear Vinyl. Uh, I don't know if the download card or anything is in here or collectible, whatever. But uh, uh, you know, look looks super interesting. And again, it's stuff straight out of Detroit. Um, not not exactly my backyard, right? But uh, uh, but you don't want to support anything good coming out of the coming out of the city. And then uh, uh, found a couple of holes in my Joe Cocker. Uh, Collection. I got uh, Stingray by uh, Joe. Here's the backside. Just plain black AM and record. Uh, it is a gatefold, it looks like, possibly. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, there's plenty of great songs in here, but nothing that. Uh, you know, not not exactly any of his big big hits. Um, in addition to that, they had a picture disc of uh, I think it's called Dress to Kill. I almost picked it up. It was like fifteen, sixteen bucks, but I knew I would never listen to it. Uh huh. And I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm tempted just to just order it from them. Uh, you know, can just message them and they ship things out a couple times a week. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll give me a good reason to go back down. And this, uh, this is one of my lower end grails because I knew it wasn't expensive, but I'd only seen it once, um, on the wild, and that was when I was in, uh, Ferndale, I believe it was. And I passed up on it because I, I, I couldn't tell if it was just a reissue made to look old or if it was an actual, um, maybe not original pressing, but, but close to it. And that's uh, Joe Cocker's debut with a little help from my friends on A&M. Uh, this is actually, once I look through the new arrivals, this is pretty much the first thing I looked for. Um, because I've been really, really wanting it. Um, and, I mean, it's, the record itself is, is clean. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is the first pressing or not. I haven't actually looked in Discogs for any of it yet. I'll be doing that here after I get done with the video, um, but no, I've been I've been looking for this thing for for ages, um, and you you think it was such a popular album you'd be able to find it, but I can find you know Sheffield Steel and you know and and pretty much everything else from them, but just this and I don't know how I missed Stingray, but um, I mean I'm I'm looking forward to this you know Bye Bye Blackbird Marjorie. Just like a woman, a little help of my friends. I mean, God, it's such a good album. And then, uh, so I think I mentioned it. <coughs> excuse me, with um, in a previous video when I found uh, Blue Oyster Cult's Imaginos, how it seems like I've probably seen every single one of their albums except for that one. Well, the same went for another band called Uriah Heep. Um, you know, one of the top... I, when you look at a list of things for prog albums, psych albums, one of the top 
listings on there is always Uriah Heep's Demons and Wizards. And I've never seen it in the wild. You know, I've seen tons of Magician's Apprentices. You know, their live albums. You know, pretty much everything else. Uh, well, this place had over a dozen copies of it. And uh, I tried picking out the one that had kind of the better sleeve, you know, the kind of the better looking record, the kind of the whole kick caboodle. It's 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 probably going to be a little noisy. I I, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, demons and wizards. Uh, you're right, heap is the the last thing I got for you. Um, I have a couple of you're right, heap albums uh, that I picked up um, from a local. Uh, just music store, you know, it sells mostly, you know, instruments and accessories and whatnot, but buys and sells a little bit of vinyl, kind of to, to make some side money, and, uh, uh, somebody came in with a bunch of German, uh, import records, I, I did, it was probably one of my first videos, uh, so I got one of their live albums, and I got, like, the Who's, you know, uh, uh, album and you know from uh, Polydor in Germany and um, a bunch of other stuff, but um, but that's like I said, that's it. I, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, three three RPM records or maybe just called RPM records uh, out of Traverse City, Michigan. Um, I can't really speak for how easy it is to get to because we took uh, you know kind of the back country roads uh, and. Uh, but check them out. They do have a reverb page, um, but that that only lists, you know, their their higher end stuff, right? Your uh, your rare Miles Davis and a lot of jazz and um, rare original pressings and stuff. But uh, but if you message them through there or through their website or Facebook or whatever, um, it sounds like if they have it, you know, they'll invoice you, whatever, ship it. I was like five bucks shipping. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I need to get back down there. Um, I felt a little bit rushed for time. It wasn't until I got back that I realized I didn't even look at Queen. You know, I'm trying to fill my vinyl collection there for, for, for Queen, uh, original pressings, or at least early pressings and not, not any of the recent reissue stuff. Um, but just, just, you know, Prince's Black Album was there, and, they actually had a Slayer bootleg from a few sessions in the, uh, from like 86, 87, but that was, that was quite expensive. Uh, I mean, just a little bit of, of pretty much everything, um, pretty well laid out, you know, I mean, other than the fact that you had just all of rock and, uh, like rap and your, 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 your big genres were all in one. The only separation you really had were soundtracks, reggae, blues, country, and jazz, I believe. Um, but even with some, some of the soundtracks, they weren't in there, right? They had Chris Mayfield's Superfly, which I believe is a soundtrack. They had Mayfield's and not in the soundtracks. Um, but, I mean, you can nitpick all day with that, right? The, the, the one amazing thing for you, for you people out there... That love your 45s. They have their own 45 room. And it's all organized. by At least by letter. Um, and it seems to all be alphabetized too. Um, the, the, the 45s aren't necessarily. But it's you know. Is organized by, by artist or by band. And uh, that's the first time I've seen anything like that. The, the record store I normally go to over in Canada. Um, they have more by price point. So like your common stuff maybe is a little beat up, you know. Still played might be like a buck ninety nine. A little more desirable ones might be two ninety nine in a stack or a, in a box or two. Three, you know, three ninety nine on up, four ninety nine on up, whatever. Um, so you got to sort through and look look at them and what you know, which is fun. You know, you're you're hunting and stuff, but uh, uh, but this was just something else, you know. Um, I didn't really find anything there that I that I wanted or that I needed. Uh, I was hoping to get lucky and get you know 
um, the single for uh, with a little help for my friends, uh, <clears throat> but they didn't have that there. And but at that point, we were running out of time. We were kind of keeping the guy um, from from heading home for for the day. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean that that's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed. I the video kind of went a little bit longer than I expected here at about 15 and a half minutes, but uh, uh, I'll probably be coming back to you here in the next couple of days to do a very late uh, entry into Tunes from the Man Caves uh, contest. Uh, Tonto jump on it. Uh, I still need to, uh, to unpack the records and, and grab the ones that I need uh, quick for it. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, but until next time, see ya.